My aunt just lost her firstborn child. She's 43 years old, and the reason my aunt lost her baby was from a disease. Now, the same aunt wants to have another baby, knowing good and well that this new baby could probably have the same disease. Why would you put a baby through this and force them to have to live this life? I don't think she should get pregnant. She's a high-risk pregnancy, and it's a bad idea. But... Let me rewind a bit. I need to tell you guys some more crucial details because this is a wild one. Hi, I'm 27 male and I have a beef with my Aunt Mary. Just because I don't want her to have a child again after her only child died. I know, guys, before you get all angry, just hear me out, right? I'm from Southeast Asia and we have, well, not all of us, right? We have this belief from our old people that I really hate. The parents make as many children as possible and or have children for the sole purpose of making them their retirement plan. What that means is that children are expected to give back to their parents, you know, when they retire or as soon as the children have jobs. Although I think giving back is a good act, some parents don't even deserve that. Like Aunt Mary, for example. Growing up, Aunt Mary was very vocal about giving birth to my cousin Leela. So, there would have been somebody who would take care of them when they get old. She had Leela when she was 18, and she never bothered to get a job and continue her education. She relied on my uncle, who worked as a taxi driver, and my mother, her sister, who has lived with us ever since. Aunt Mary was the one who looked after me whenever my mother was at work when I was a child. Well, Aunt Mary always said something like, I gave birth to you, so you owe me everything. You're lucky I didn't get rid of you. You're the only hope for my future. She would say those things to Leela. Well, they instilled in Leela's mind that she must provide for them when Leela gets a job and until that they die. Leela grew up thinking that she owed her parents everything and that they could do absolutely no wrong. She never pursued her own dream job, but instead followed whatever Aunt Mary would just want her to do. Anyways, since they're living with us, Leela and I grew up together. So, we were pretty close to one another. We went to the same school, we were classmates, and had the same friend group. And we were best friends. And I could say that Leela did not have the life that she wanted. Leela wanted to go different places. She wanted to try various foods and things of culture, and it really just pains me to live knowing Leela did not get the chance to do all the things that she wanted. Growing up, I saw how Leela's parents, aka Aunt Mary, and her husband pressured Leela to be always on top. They were the epitome of strict Asian parents, who demanded nothing less, well, than perfection from their only daughter. Leela had to study for hours every day, even on weekends and holidays. Heck, she was not usually allowed to hang out with us, her friends. Well, whenever she did, I had to help her sneak out her lie to her parents, and I could see the guilt and fear inside of their eyes. All I could do was be with Leela as much as I could. My mother tried to reason with Aunt Mary and told them to be easy with Leela, but they just snapped at her saying they knew what was best for Leela and that she had to work hard to secure her future. What did they mean by Leela's future? More like their future. I hated seeing Leela suffer like that, and I wished that I could do something to make her happy. But Leela's love for her parents overshadowed the cruel things that they did to her. See, she loved her parents, even though that they were suffocating her, and then college came. Although Leela still excelled and was doing what her parents wanted her to do, like taking the programs they wanted her to take, she developed a not-so-good coping mechanism. While her parents were proud of her, they also had a high expectation of her. They wanted her to become a doctor, because surprise, surprise, it's a high-paying job. Anyways, Leela found herself absolutely overwhelmed with work. The competition and the pressure, especially from Aunt Mary... She still tried her best, though, but she felt like she was losing herself in the process because she did not have time for friends, hobbies, or even any sort of fun. I became her rest from her stressful world. She realized that she did not even know if she wanted to be a doctor anymore, and felt trapped in a path that was not her own. A path that she did not choose. That's when she started to smoke. It was just a way to cope with the stress to escape the reality of the world and just rebel against her parents. 
She knew it was bad for her health, but she didn't care. She felt like she had no control over her life, so she might as well enjoy the little pleasures that she could find. You know, she would sneak out of her dorm at night or hide in the bathroom between classes and light up a cigarette. She would inhale the smoke and exhale her worries. She felt free for a moment, but her freedom came at a cost. Aunt Marie confronted her one day when she found a pack of cigarettes in her book bag. Well, she was furious, disappointed, and absolutely hurt. And she accused her of wasting her potential, ruining her future, and betraying her trust. She threatened to cut her off of the tuition just to disown her and kick her out of the house. Aunt Marie and her husband gave her an ultimatum. Quit smoking or quit college. At that moment, I could not fathom their audacity. First of all, that's our house and we can choose who lives there and who can't. Second, how dare they threaten to cut her off of the tuition when they were the ones hoping that she would graduate on top to have a high-paying job? Well, but of course, I am with them. I wanted Leela to stop smoking too, but they didn't have to threaten her with stop paying of the college. Of course, Leela was shocked, scared, and angry. You know, studying was the only thing that she knew because her parents did not allow her to do anything else that she wanted. She felt like her parents did not understand her, did not care about her and simply did not love her, and felt like they only saw her as an extension of themselves, as a tool to fulfill their dreams, as a trophy to show off. She felt like she had to choose between pleasing them or pleasing herself, and of course, she, the former, it won. Okay, let's fast forward. My mother passes away fighting cancer even before we finish college. I still remember the day my mother told me that she has cancer. Yeah, I was 18, fresh out of high school and ready to start college with Leela. It was hard, it was very, very hard. But I had Leela by my side, and she had me. We studied together, cried together, and laughed together, and we helped each other cope with the stress that we were both under. Well, my mother, she fought very bravely. But the cancer, it was way too aggressive, and she passed away a few months before our graduation. I was absolutely devastated. But I also felt relieved that she was no longer fighting in pain. She left me some money for her life insurance and savings, which I used to pay for the rest of college and to cover the expenses of the medical bills, and for the allowances my mother used to give Aunt Mary. I also inherited the house, which was the only thing my father had left us. And then Leela and I finally graduated from college with honors. I mean, she was really top of the class, and I was right under her. We both wanted to go to medical school, but money was our constraint, so we decided to work first. I moved out after a year of working while Leela and her family stayed in my house. I thought it was the right thing to do, and thought that I was capable enough to move out so maybe I could give their family privacy for once. I wish I didn't. I moved out to a small studio apartment near my workplace, which is at a clinic, and the house I always kept in touch with Leela, who was working as a research assistant at the university that we studied at before. We often hang out together, and whenever we do, she expresses how much she wants to move out, but can't because it's just simply too expensive. She began to hate living with her parents, who had become worse, especially now that we're alone. They started to demand money from Leela, who was barely making enough, and they said that she owed them for raising her and letting her stay in the house. They also discouraged her from moving out, saying it was a waste of money and that she should focus on her own work and save for medical school. Leela was miserable, and I felt guilty. I wanted to help her, but uh, I didn't know how. Then one day, Leela gave me the worst news ever when they found out that she had cystic fibrosis when she had a checkup of her lungs. See, cystic fibrosis is a hereditary disease that can be inherited from both of the parents' genes. She was not screened for it as a baby, so they did not know early on. Some people, like Leela, did not experience the symptoms until her 20s. This does not have a cure, but doctors offer more treatments that can help control the symptoms and complications to make her condition easier to live with. Also, I'd say regular appointments are obviously needed just to monitor her so the doctors can recommend what Leela can do. But as you all know, she was not able to do all that because it was a late diagnosis. Well, guys, we tried to make the absolute best of the situation. I tried to stay positive and hopeful, but it was hard. 
Lila's condition worsened over time, and she had frequent lung infections where she coughed up blood and mucus. She also had trouble breathing, even with oxygen, and she had pain in her chest, abdomen, and joints. She lost weight. She lost energy. She became depressed and anxious and hated seeing herself in the mirror, looking like a skeleton. She hated living like this, and not long after, Leela passed away due to respiratory failure. One night, when I was at the house, she had a severe attack. She could not breathe. She could not speak. She could not move, so I dialed emergency. I tried to calm her down, and I told her that everything would be okay and that help is on the way. Well, she just looked at me with nothing more than a faint smile. Then she closed her eyes and she stopped breathing. Her already damaged lungs due to smoking were not good for her body. She's already vulnerable to infection and tissue damage that was due to her disease. Her body could not bear her disease anymore. Well, it's been a month since Leela's burial and everybody was sad, especially her parents. I could not even go to our house because all I could see there were the memories that I made with her. But this morning, I had to. Because Aunt Mary was celebrating her birthday and she required us to attend because she had an important announcement. I really wish I had not gone, because now I think my life is going to be ruined. Aunt Mary announced that they were going to try for a new baby and explicitly said that they wanted to try so that there's someone who can take care of them when they're so old in a joking manner. I was taken back. I was furious that I could not help but comment. So, they could end up like Leela? Uh, of course, everybody got angry. It was a birthday celebration and I turned the mood dark. I ended up explaining myself that they're old and, you know, carriers of cystic fibrosis, so trying for another child is very, very risky. I tried to warn them how dangerous having a child is, but they just replied that I'm just jealous because I no longer have parents who can take care of me. I'm like, what the hell? How's that even connected to the real issue? After hearing that, I could not help but shout, how are they going to regret this? You know, they will that they did not listen to my advice. They should stop treating their children as retirement plans and just leave now. Many of my relatives are messaging me demanding that I apologize to Aunt Mary and her husband, but I don't want to because I feel like I did not do anything wrong. So, am I the a-hole for telling my aunt not to try for another kid because they're too old and they might pass on the disease that killed their firstborn? Update number one. Hello everyone, I want to thank you for the comment and support on my original post. I really do appreciate it and I'm just uh, sorry that I cannot reply to everyone. But I've read every comment and message and to those people who are angry, I think you're being close-minded. You know, I care not only for the child that they're planning to conceive, but also for Aunt Mary's health as well. As I've mentioned, they're old and conceiving a child may just affect their health. Anyways, it's been a week and a lot has happened since I posted, and I'm simply afraid it's not good news. Aunt Mary decided to share what happened at her birthday party with the rest of the family, and she even lied that I did not want them to have kids because I was afraid my share of my grandpa's inheritance would be reduced. This is absolutely ridiculous and untrue. I don't care about the money, and I never said anything like that, for God's sake. I have my own house, which is where they're currently living for free, by the way. And yes, I do have a job. So, I don't care about all that. To be honest, I think that, well, we're the ones who were after the inheritance because having a new child would mean another name in my grandparents' will. If you get what I mean, I mean, I was so angry when I eventually found out about the lies. That's when I decided to call them out on Facebook. I just could not resist my rage that time. I could not let them get away with it, so I had to defend myself and expose their pretty little lies. I also mentioned in my post my side of the story regarding their decisions, which I opposed, obviously, and how dangerous and harmful their plans are. I really thought that bringing the issue on Facebook would clear things up, but no, it only made things worse. I forgot how uh, distorted and crooked my relatives' minds were. Ugh, I just wish my mother was still alive because then I am very sure she would have had my back and stood up against them. Anyways, now I'm receiving a ton of messages from my relatives and family friends and most of them are not okay with what I did. 
They're saying that I could not be happy for Aunt Mary and her husband, so I should just let them be. They even called me horrible names and told me how ungrateful I was. Because I simply owed Aunt Mary for everything that, well, they've done for me because they took care of me when I was growing up. They're saying that I could respect them and that I should apologize for the support that they gave me. Well, I can't believe how cruel my family can actually be, guys. <laughs> there were relatives who sided with me. Mostly younger or the same age as me, but they were not too vocal about their opinions. Because they were scared of their parents, and I'd say most of them are angry and not listening to my side of the story or to reason. They're not considering the risk and consequences of their plans of the child's well-being. On top of that, I heard that Aunt Mary continued to spread lies about me. They told the public that the reason for my actions was that I had a history of mental illness and substance abuse, and that I was not in sound state of mind. <laughs> That's absurd. All I did was tell them to not have a child, and this is how far that they're willing to go? Ruining someone's image is not okay. Especially nowadays, when all things you say on the internet stay on the internet. I could not help but overthink, because what if this could affect my job or future employment? Please, if anyone has any advice or words of encouragement, I would really appreciate it. I don't know how to handle this, well, but I just do know that I wanted to get back to them, and I wanted to start with the house. It's mine, after all. They've destroyed my image too much, and they just can't get away with it. Anyways, thank you for reading. Update number two. I kicked them out. That's right. I kicked Aunt Mary and her husband out of my house that the parents left for me. A lot of your comments of what Aunt Mary did was way below the belt. Some of you told me to sue her for defamation, but I don't want to go that far. So I decided to go for the lesser evil payback, kick them out of the house. As you may remember, Aunt Mary and her husband have been living in my house for years, absolutely rent-free. While I moved out and lived in an apartment, I decided to take back what was rightfully mine and reclaim my dignity. So I showed them care and generosity, but this is what they gave back to me. I went to the house last week, and when I got there, they did not even want to let me in, saying I was not welcome, so... I had to remind them that it was my house. They ended up letting me in because they did not have a choice, I mean, did they? I told them to pack their bags and leave, and that they only had 24 hours to vacate my house, and if not, I would involve the police. Of course, they were shocked and furious, and I bet they did not expect this, that I had the guts to stand up to them and to kick them out. They started to scream and curse at me and to accuse me of being a selfish and heartless person. They tried to play the victim and make me feel sorry for them, and they begged me to reconsider and let them stay. They offered to retract all the things that they've said and tell the people the truth, but it was all too late. The damage to me has been done. After that, I left and went back to my apartment. News of what happened spread like wildfire. And when my grandparents heard of it, they got very angry and disappointed and scolded me for being a disrespectful, ungrateful person. They said that I had no right to do that and that I had to apologize and take them back. If not, they would just, well, not give my inheritance to me. They would cut me out of their will and they would give everything that was previously mine to my aunt and uncle and their future child. As much as I just wanted to say, forget it, and cut them all out, I realized I could benefit from the inheritance. I can use it to fund my medical school, you know. So, I went to their house yesterday, and I simply explained everything. I told them about the cruel ways in which Aunt Mary raised Leela. I gave them screenshots of my conversations with Leela when she was alive and showed them the rants and stories about her mom. I explained to them how Leela was diagnosed with her diseases and how the child Aunt Mary wanted could be diagnosed with it too. I didn't bother arguing about how Aunt Mary only wanted a child as retirement plan, because I'm sure she got that from her mother, a.k.a. Grandma. Anyways, I also told them that Aunt Mary is a liar, and they can have a drug test on me to prove that never in my life have I ever used an illegal substance. I could see the doubt and disbelief in my grandparents' eyes as I told them everything that went down. So they asked me a lot of questions, but yeah, tomorrow I'll do the drug test. Hopefully after that, they'll change their minds about me. Regarding the house, I plan to rent it to a nice family to add some income. 
I'm not ready yet to go back there anyways, because I'm not ready to face the bad memories. Feel free to leave advice in the comments, and I will update you soon enough. Update 3 Hey guys, sorry for the late update. I know, I know. Eight months! It's been eight months since the second update, and Aunt Mary ended up giving birth to a baby boy. Before I talk about Aunt Mary, I wanted to talk about me first. Remember when I was asked to take a drug test? Well, it came out crystal clean, clearly, as it should have. And little by little, my family started to know the truth. My grandparents did not remove me from the will, and they removed Aunt Mary and her husband instead. Also, I finally moved into my house, and it's good to be back. Anyways, as you may remember, my aunt and uncle decided to go ahead with their plan to conceive a child, ignoring all the warnings and risks that I had told them about, and I'm just sure you guys are wondering how she can give birth if only eight months have passed. Well, their baby was prematurely born. He was very small and weak, and he had trouble breathing. He was rushed to the NICU, where he was hooked up to the machines and tubes. This time, the baby was screened for cystic fibrosis because of her sister's history. Unfortunately, he was also diagnosed with the same hereditary disease as his sister. From then on, I knew he was going to suffer, and he did not deserve it. He was an innocent baby and helpless, but he had no choice because his parents were stupid. He was not a miracle, he was a mistake. They were devastated, absolutely devastated, ugh, and overwhelmed by the situation and had to deal with medical bills. They had to sell their belongings and borrow money from their relatives and friends. I just want to see their faces of guilt and regret for what they've done. They had alienated and offended most of their family and friends with their lies and their demands. They ruined their lives and their son's lives with their stupid decisions. Well, currently, they are living in my grandparents' house. They used to depend on my grandparents' money, but now they refuse to give them money because they're grown-ups. And they have to fend for themselves, you know. Also, I think it's ironic how my grandparents were so angry when I kicked Aunt Mary from my house, but when Aunt Mary leached off them, they pushed her away. Anyways, Aunt Mary's really in need of money, and they have only one person left to turn to. Me. They reached out to me and begged me for help because they wanted to give their son a chance to live. They tried to make me feel sorry and their son and made me feel guilty and responsible, but I don't trust them. After all they did to me, hell no. I refused and told them to leave me alone and said that they have brought this upon themselves and that they had to deal with it. I said that I warned them about the possible consequences of their actions. They made their choice and now they have to live with it and they had to pay for it. I didn't wait for their answer and immediately shut the door. I heard them as they cursed me and called me a heartless monster and said that I was the reason why their son was suffering because I cursed their family. I thought I would not see them anymore after that interaction, but I was wrong. For the past few days, I noticed them lurking in the streets, watching my house and my movements, and I just wondered what they were up to, and I felt uneasy and paranoid. I decided that I would install CCTV cameras around my house tomorrow to monitor their actions and to protect myself. I hoped that they had nothing to do with me and that they would leave me alone. Update number four. Hey guys, it's been a week. If you can remember, I saw Aunt Mary with her husband suspiciously lurking in my street. Well, thankfully, I installed some cameras because, uh, what the heck? I caught them red-handed as they stole from my house broke into my garage and took everything that they thought was of value. I mean, kudos to them. What's better than to steal a house that you lived in long enough to know what values are there? As soon as I saw the footage, I compiled it and showed it to the police. I filed a report because I wanted to press charges and ask for a restraining order. I wanted them to be arrested and punished and go as far from me as possible. I want them gone. I know that Aunt Mary just gave birth to my cousin, but I can't let it go. Instead of taking care of her newborn, here they are, stealing from me. The police called this morning and told me that they were both arrested, and they found them with a bag full of items. They had the audacity to tell me that I was lying and told the police that they didn't steal. They are just simply getting back the items that they left when I got kicked out. Of course, the police had to check their alibi, and the process was prolonged, but after the inspection, they found a gold locket in their bag that had my picture. Not only that, but I saw my laptop, my camera, my jewelry, and other items that I worked hard to buy. 
I felt a surge of resentment and bitterness. I mean, how could they do this to me? They can no longer find alibis, and the police told me that they just kept me updated on the process of the case. The police then escorted me out of the room, leaving them behind, and I heard them calling my name, begging me to reconsider, crying and sobbing. And I ignored them, and I simply walked away. And like the police said, I'll also keep you guys updated on the progress of the case. Final update. Hey, I hope you still remember. I know it's been a while, hasn't it? I'm sure you've all been wondering what the heck happened. Well, as for me, I worked hard to get into medical school. Yes, it was not easy, but hey, I made it. I'm now finally enrolled in one of the best schools in the country, and I'm so happy and proud of myself. I feel like I'm on the right path, and that path that I was meant to follow is here. But that was not the only good thing that happened. In med school, I also met her. She was in my class, sitting in the front row, always raising her hand and answering questions, and I was instantly drawn to her. But I was too shy to approach. One day, we were assigned to be partners for a lab project, and I guess you could say the rest is history. You remember Aunt Mary and her husband, though, right? Well, a well-deserved punishment went out to get them. Well, they were imprisoned for three years. That's right, three years for stealing from my house, so my grandparents ended up taking care of their son. Anyways, my cousin is alive, but his condition is worse. It's just sad that he survived, but he can't live normally. Well, that's why, and instead of Aunt Mary having a new retirement plan... They ended up having to take care of a sick child for the rest of their lives. Well, that's it, guys. So, Aunt Mary was really a character. Today's story had a lot of ups and downs, and it had a lot of family intervention involved, and I just can't believe if I was in OP's position, I could sit back and just let everything play out. I think OP did everything that I would have done, but guys, I do want to know, do you think that OP handled the aunt properly? I want to know in the comment section down below your opinion, so if you want to share it, that would be awesome. I love reading everybody's comments and opinions, and it's a really cool thing to see people's perspective on stuff. My name's Mr. Reddito. I narrate stories like this every day, and if you guys want to be a part of it, consider subscribing to the channel. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow, and of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.